Welcome back to video 4 in this series. Right now I'll be talking about the music and the footstep audio systems. If you haven't seen any of the previous videos in this series, go do that because they provide important context and techniques within FMOD. If you have seen the previous videos, then welcome back and let's get to it. When it comes to the music, it's a good idea to know beforehand what type of system you want to build. Maybe you just want to use one stereo track, or maybe you have multiple tracks of different instruments or sections of the music. In this case, we're only using one music track that I composed over a year ago, and that contains a melody layer and a chord and drum layer. The approach to creating a music event is just like any other event in FMOD. Right click, new event, let's call it music. And just notice one thing over here in the dock, you have a 3D panner. Just click on this and delete it for now. By removing the 3D panner, you're changing this event audio from a 3D object to a 2D object. And this is exactly what we want in this case, because the music is not coming from a point in the world, such as a radio. It's coming directly to our ears, seemingly from nowhere. So since there's going to be multiple layers in this music event, let's just create another track and open up the audio bin. Look for the music in this case, here and here. So just click and drag the first one, and click and drag the second one, close this. And as always, it's good practice to label your tracks if you have more than one. So this is chords, and this is melody. And this is a personal preference, but I prefer the melody on top, similar to how you would read a musical score. And just zoom out using the shortcut, control and command, square bracket left. And now to listen to what it sounds like. Okay, now let's add some logic to it. When you're adding logic on the logic track over here, first you want to create markers for sections of the song. Now normally you would want to add the tempo of the music like this. Add tempo marker, drag it down, and write the tempo. And you could also change the time signature over here if you wanted to. And then you would go up to here where you have time and beats and you would select beats. And now you can see the bar numbers and it would be easier to follow the music. In cases like this, the tempo actually changes at every bar. So you could change the tempo at every bar by adding a lot of tempo markers, but we've decided to just go with the time instead of the tempo. The next step would be to figure out if you want any sections to loop. So in this case, I want the verse to loop back to the verse and the chorus to keep looping on itself. So add loop, drag it down, drag it all the way here. And same thing for chorus, add loop. And if you listen to how this sounds now. And. Perfect. Now if you notice, I've added some green looking markers. These markers are called transitions, and as their name implies, they're used to transition from one point to another. So in this case, while you're playing back over here, it's going to play back, and then once you reach this point, it's going to go to chorus, which is over here. To create a transition marker, simply right-click in the Logic Tracks area and go to Add Transition to, and pick a place. I'm going to do Outro, and since I've already got some over here as markers, I'm just going to drag, and they're going to snap. And now that the markers are done, let's try playing. And you can see when it reaches this green line, it goes directly to this chorus section. But what if we don't want that? What if we want the verse section to keep playing? This is where trigger conditions come in. So if you click on one of the markers, you'll notice over here under conditions, we can add trigger conditions with this plus, but there's nothing here right now. So we have to add a parameter. Just go up here to the plus, click on it, add parameter. Let's call this verse. 0 to 1, min max, 0 is going to be off, 1 is going to be on. And so now when you click on the marker, go to chorus for the chorus marker, and set this to 1 like this, and whenever the cursor reaches this marker, if the chorus is set to 1, it will transition to the chorus. If it is not 1, if it is 0, it's going to keep looping, unless outro is 1, then it's going to go to the outro. And now just fill in the rest of these markers. Here's a demo of that. So let's say it's playing in the verse and the outro is one. 
And since we're using two layers, we're using a melody and a chord layer, I'm going to create another parameter that's going to determine whether the melody layer is on or off. And I can actually use this melody in parameter to automate the volume of this melody layer. To do that, I right click on the knob, add automation, and I click on the melody in parameter. And now I just add two points. So when the parameter is at zero over here, it's going to be off and at another point. And when the parameter is at one, it's going to be playing at full volume. Here's how that sounds. And since in the game, the melody is going to be transitioning to on or off, we want to make that a little bit smoother than just a sudden and jarring effect. So if we click twice on a parameter such as melody in, that opens up the smoothing in the dock. With this six speed knob, you can change the rate of how quickly a parameter goes from one point to the next. So right now it's on instant. And if we increase it to something like 0.33 per second, listen to what kind of effect that has now. So now that this music system is done, it's ready to be integrated into Unity. So just before you do that, remember to assign this event to the bank and build. Now that we have a music event, we can attach it on an object in Unity. Let's find the main character, go to add component, fmod event emitter, and just like on the crane, under play event, go under object start, when the game starts, when this object starts, look for the event, music. And now you can see that these are the parameters that we created but we can also set the initial values when the game first starts. So since by default, the music event starts at the intro, let's not worry about the verse, chorus, or outro, but we do want the melody to come in from the beginning. So let's check this and set the value to one, or in this case, on. So right now, if we started the game, if we played the scene, you would hear the music, but you wouldn't hear any interactivity. And that's because we haven't yet set any trigger zones that are gonna change the music to the verse, chorus, or the outro. So the easiest way to create a trigger zone is to right click, create 3D cube, and just delete the mesh filter and mesh renderer. You won't need those. So all you have is this box trigger area. Now just change the scale of the object. And once that's done, position this to the area of the map where you want the chorus to be heard. And just rename it so you know what it is. And an important thing about the box collider, for this, make sure is trigger is checked. Otherwise, if it wasn't checked, this would be an invisible wall to the player and the player could not enter this area. And in order for this trigger to work, we have to attach an fmod script. So go add component. We want the fmod studio parameter trigger script. And then over here where it says target, it's currently set to none, but you have to drag your player. So whatever your player is in your scene, click and drag your player onto here. And now it opens up another option. So for trigger, We'll do on trigger enter. So when the player enters this trigger zone and then the collision tag. So our player has the collision tag or a tag of player. So let's go to player. And finally over here, we can see the event that is associated with the player. So on the player object, we have the music event. So if we open up this disclosure triangle, we can see that these are all of the parameters we set in FMOD for this event. So now you would set the parameters you want to change whenever the player enters this area. So since this is the chorus music trigger, I want the chorus to be playing and I also want the melody to be set to one just in case the player was previously in an area where the melody was not playing. So now that you know how to make a trigger zone, set up a lot of them for your music for all your other events. This is what I have for the music system in this level. So at certain areas, you're going to hear the chorus, you're going to hear the outro, you're not going to hear the melody. Here's a demo of that, but in the interest of time, I'm just going to show you how the music transitions from melody in to melody out based on the trigger zone. So those are the concepts that went into making the music system for this level. Now let's take a look at the footstep system. For the footstep event, you first have to decide how footsteps are going to be called from your game into FMOD. 
It could be a single footstep for all the surfaces. It could be a Raycast system that detects multiple footstep surfaces. In this case, we have four footstep surface types. And the script in Unity is outputting either one of those four surface types or a combination. That means that if you're standing on a surface such as sand and water, for example, there's a puddle of water on the sand surface, we're going to be able to blend those two sounds together. So create an event, add three more tracks, one for each surface type, add four multi sounds, label the tracks. Now find the correct audio for each footstep and drag it into the multi sound container. You can also add some variation at this point if you like for each. So if you remember our shortcut, if you hold the Option or Alt key, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac, click and drag on Volume and Pitch. So now if we play, we hear everything at once, which isn't what we want. So if you remember in the music system, we used a parameter to determine whether one layer was playing or not. We can do the same thing for these. Let's create a parameter for each surface type. And keeping the minimum from 0 to 1, off and on, is just fine for this. And again, just like in the music system, we want to add automation to the volume to determine whether you can hear the layer or not. So right click on the volume knob, add automation, go to the parameter, and make two points. For 0, and 1 for full. And now do the same thing for all the other materials. And now let's test it. So say you're standing on a wood surface, this gets set to wood. Maybe you're standing on a dirt surface. Maybe you're standing on both a wood and a water surface. There's a puddle of water on the wood. You can mix this as well if you want. So you can remove the 3D panner over here if you want. That's only if these footsteps are going to be played back just for the player. If these footsteps were being used across multiple characters in a game, for example, an NPC that you're walking by, if they're using these footsteps and they don't have attenuation on them, then you'll just hear them coming from yourself, which is not what you want. So in that case, you would leave the 3D panner on, but that's only if you're sharing footsteps with other characters in your game. So for now, delete this. And if you notice over here, we have the output. And right now it's two channels, which represents stereo. So let's set it to mono. And this is just because some of these footstep audio recordings are in stereo. So the footsteps aren't necessarily in the middle of the stereo image. Sometimes they're on the right, sometimes they're on the left. And that can sometimes feel weird from a first person perspective. So now that the footsteps are done, just assign it to the master bank and built. Now in Unity, I just have to find the player character. And in this case, since we have a custom footstep script, I just have to add it. And then I just have to link the fmod event. And now let's test it out. So now that you've seen how to create a music and a footstep system and what that involves, be creative, make some fmod events, and use all those concepts. Join me in the next video where I'll talk about mixing and live editing. Thanks for watching!